Alright guys, so this video we're going to be making um, our first item uh, for the 3D printer. Um, in case you're not one of my students and you've just discovered my channel, I'm that other science guy and we'll be doing some CAD designs here. The first item we're going to make is a, a deck box for Magic the Gathering or Pokemon cards. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to New Design. For the record, when you open this program, you double click on it and then wait. It'll take it a minute to start up. Don't get impatient and keep double clicking because it's going to open up like eight instances of this program, which is already demanding on your processor and will just, it'll bug it and take it forever to get it back up. Alright, uh, new design, so file new design. I'm now going to save as so that I, I can, I have it already as a deck box. Uh, simple. This is a simple one. And we're good. Alright, let's do this. So, first thing I did was uh, do some research on the magic cards for dimensions and such. So, that's my recording software. I drew this guy up. This is one of the pages of my notebook that I was using. That I recorded the dimensions of magic cards. Um, then decided that I, so Pokemon cards are comparable in size to Magic cards, so don't worry about it. I'm doing this for Magic, but you, it'll work for Pokemon too. Um, I got the dimension 63 by 88 millimeters for Magic card. Then I said that I'd be cool if I, or it'd be cool if I can um, uh, put my sleeved cards in my deck box. So uh, I looked at penny sleeves, which are the cheap guys that you can get for a um, dollar, a hundred of them for a dollar uh, at any card store. Uh, the dimensions on the package is in inches, and I converted them to millimeters because the, the program uses um, millimeters by default, uh, metric, and uh, I prefer metric, and you, you would not be able to convince me otherwise. Um, so the first, uh, it, I, I went through those ones already and found out my numbers were wrong when I did some math, and that's going to happen to you guys too. You guys will make mistakes and get started over too. Luckily, I've done that for you on this one, and you don't have to worry about it. Now, I chose to make a deck box in this style with a lid guy who slides over this solid dude here with a little base that lips out. So the first thing I want to make is my lid. Okay. Um, so I calculated my um, shape to be 75.6 by 101.1. So I'm going to click on this guy, the square, or rectangle, click at the origin, because that's where we start it, you don't, you don't have to, but it, it definitely helps when I have to come help you and you've already, and you start to hit the origin, alright, 75.6 uh, millimeters, you don't have to type, um, I realize that this screen capture uh, probably does not show you me typing those, um, so what I've done is I, I just when I click that, I just click here, I don't drag it, I just, or I don't click and hold, I just click it and move my mouse over here to make this guy. And then I hold it here, and then it's already highlighting usually the, the, the bottom left dimension. And then I just, I don't click on it, I just enter, I just type. So I type in 75.6, enter. Um, if you don't give it units, it goes to automatic to millimeters. If you do give it units, like centimeters or inches, it will convert that number into millimeters. Which is which is handy. Um, so the next dimension it automatically goes there, so I don't even touch anything. I just go straight to typing 101.1 millimeters, and that goes off in that direction. All right, step one. When you want to move your guy around, you need to click on pan and then left click and drag to move your dude. If you want to zoom, mouse wheel, mouse wheel, um, and then middle mouse click to rotate. Um, so I suggest if you're on a laptop, one of our laptops, to grab one of the USB mouses, um, mice, because you, uh, it is frustrating to try to rotate and zoom with a mouse trackpad. Alright, so we've made our base guy here. Uh, when we draw a shape like this and we enter 3D mode, Design Spark is going to turn it into a, um, surface. It's an infinitesimal little slice, so it's not a solid, it doesn't really exist yet, so we need to make it so. 
So the first thing we use is we use this pull function to pull this guy into three dimensions. So you click on this guy, check the arrow direction. Um, this arrow is going to point in the direction of uh, the positive direction. So if you were to enter a value, um, just any value like 10, which I'm going to do, uh, it'll go up 10. If you put a negative sign, it would go down 10. Um, and this becomes important because it likes to just change on a whim. So you need to pay attention for that because he'll try to trick you. Alright, so I've decided that um, the average deck box is to think of 10 centimeters high because they're for like um, big 100 card decks. So I've decided to go ahead and stick with that philosophy for now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just enter 10 cm for centimeters. Enter. I could also enter 100 millimeters. Um, in fact, I don't know. I don't know why. But overcomplicate things for myself. Alright, um, when I want to do something different I always press escape a few times so I can switch out of whatever mode I was in so I don't accidentally click on something and pull it and not want to do that. If you do end up doing that, you can hold control and then press Z and it will go back one step. It will undo one step and it will keep doing that per step. Um, don't get too liberal with that because we don't have any redo buttons. Um, so you can't undo your undos. I'm afraid. Alright, now we have a cube. Well, it's a, um, it's a rectangular prism, not a cube. But um, we're making progress. Now I want to make it uh, empty so that it can be my lid. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate to the bottom here. I'm going to use the shell option here, this guy. Shell. Um, and by the way, when I click on all these, there's going to be little options over here. We're not going to use this for this guy. Um, but they do make they, they are fun. So for now we're just gonna do normal ones. So show. I'm gonna click on this guy and then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move anything. I'm just gonna click it and then type in two. Enter. Two. Enter. Um, and that gave us that shelled this whole shape out into an empty box with a wall thickness of two millimeters. Alright. Alright, cool. Now we have a lid. Making some progress. Alright, now I want to make the base. We're good to make the base now. So, we got to go back into sketch mode so we can start drawing that guy. So I'm going to zoom in here to this guy to pick my plane that I want to draw in on this guy. So I click sketch mode, and it puts me on this plane. By the way, plane is like is, the, is an infinitesimal slice in some direction. So this is a plane on that guy. And when I move this, you'll probably see it, it cuts away all that stuff so I can just study the, the slice I care about, which is which very useful. So I'm actually going to do that. Um, when you get lost like this, you can just hit the blue button here and it orients you back to a good position. Um, I'm actually going to use the plan view real quick to give me the bird's eye view. Pan, zoom out. By the way, when you... Um, when you zoom in, wherever this mouse is pointing is where it's going to zoom and zoom out. Um, yeah. Alright, so now we're in this guy. Um, try to orient myself here. I want to draw my new lid. I'm going to hover over this guy so it auto um, orients me along where that guy was. I'm going to go over here. Uh, click. We've got the same dimensions that we were, 75.6 and a 101. Oh, hold on, I didn't, I didn't like what I did. Square, there we go. Pull out here, 75.6 and then 101.1. .1. Uh, blue. Uh, I want to go and enter 3D mode. Surface that we get to pull. I decided that originally that I wanted my my lip to be 0.5 centimeters uh, thick, and then later decided that 0.4 looked looked better. So I'm gonna go 0.4. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull. Click here. Uh, this guy decided he wanted to be down now, and I disagree. So I want to go up. Um, so I'm going to use a negative sign. You won't see it, but I'm going to type negative, which is a little hyphen up by the zero. 
Um, uh, negative 0.4 centimeters. Which I could also say um, just 4 millimeters. Alright, so now I got the lip for my base. Now I'm going to get a little more complicated. I decided that I want the walls to be 2 millimeters, which is fine. But um, I need a, I put what I have, a, I call a tolerance here. Because when you have two surfaces, if I put this at 0.2 exact, it would be snug against the surface, like it would be in complete contact. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't move, there'd be, it wouldn't be able to move down. So I add a tolerance, which is a tiny little gap. This is centimeters and this is millimeters. I, I tend to interchange them. So this guy is tiny, tiny, tiny compared to that guy. And it's just a thin little sliver of space along the inside to allow it room to slide up and down so that this lid, this lid can slide up uh, right on. So I have 0.2 centimeters plus 0.3 millimeters, which is 2.3 millimeters. All right? Um, and if you have to deal with me, you're going to end up converting between those a lot. But it's metric, so it's easy. It's not like some abominable construct. All right. So we're going to re-enter our sketch plane. You can you can click on this uh, sketch plane and then click on the surface you want to draw, or you, you can start here, click on the surface, and then click here. It, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to click plan view to orient myself. I want to see all of it. Pan it up a little bit. Uh, escape a few times. Um, we're going to use what we call the offset function. So we're going to click this guy. The offset function is going to move. Is going to allow us to click on an edge and bring it in so many, or copy and bring it in so many, uh, such a space. Click. I'm going to hold Control and click each of these edges. So I'm going to click this guy, this guy, this dude, and this dude. All right. So that's going to let us change the shape here. Um, we decided we wanted 2.3 millimeters, so we had the 2 millimeter wall for the lid to fit on, plus the little gap, so that it would slide easily. 0.3 uh, millimeters might be a little too big, of um, like it might be a really large tolerance, but uh, for a rectangle at least. Um, but uh, I don't, I don't really know. I think I would like to think 0.1 would be enough. But rather than like printing this off and wasting a bunch of plastic and, and printing time, I'll start larger um, to give me some more space. Alright. So, that gives me the outside of that wall. Now I'm going to uh, offset, control, click on these dudes. So I can make the thickness of that wall, which is 2 millimeters. Alright. Now. We have this gap here, which is for the, the 2 millimeters plus the 0.3 for tolerance. And then we have the 2 millimeters here, which is the wall width of our, our base box part. So, blue. Um, I'm going to go to 3D mode. This is the guy I care about right here. That's the wall. I'm going to go ahead and pull him up. So it goes up. Um, Theoretically, you'd want it to go up 10 centimeters, like this guy. Except, remember, we had a um, the width in here, the 0.2 millimeter width. So we have uh, a little ceiling in here of 0.2 millimeters. So I'm going to have a gap of 0.2 millimeters so that it fits nice and snug on the base, so that it looks all nice and complete. In fact, I'm actually going to add a 0.1 millimeter tolerance just so that to make sure that it makes contact. So I'm going to go up. Uh, 10 minus the 0.2 for the ceiling, and then 0.1 for the uh, millimeters for the tolerance. So a total of minus 0.3 millimeters. So I'm gonna go um, 9.7 centimeters. Uh, with a dot. Not seven. Enter. All right. And that looks appropriate. I think that's what I want. Okay. All right. And we got a deck box. It's a very simple deck box, but it's uh, it's our deck box. Uh, we I'll make some more videos later to show us how to make cool little designs on the sides of these guys and make them look cooler. 
Uh, the next next one I think I'll do is to show you how to fillet these edges. It'd be a nice quick one to show you how to round these edges so it looks less um, less plain. Um, yep. So now let's get this guy ready to print. Right now they're saved as uh, this whole thing is an RS doc, which is useless. We want STL files, which stands for stereo stereo lithography, um, and that's that's. Um, the printing method of our printers, and that's what our printer reads as STL files. Um, so right now, this file here is our assembly. Uh, it's this whole thing, and it's called an assembly because it's um, the main file with a bunch of pieces. So it's an assembly of pieces. All right. So we're gonna need to convert each of these solids into components of the assembly. So you'll see how there's a box around the whole thing of the assembly, and now we're gonna go to this guy, who is our lid. Right click, move to new component, and we're going to name it um, box lid. Enter. I'm going to go box lid simple because I'm going to later do a box lid f um, fillet for the other one. So box lid simple. Enter. So that's this guy. So I click here. Now we have a little box, uh, or a little orange square guy around the lid, which tells us that that's a component of the assembly called box lid simple. You could technically name this whatever you want. I strongly encourage you guys to name them uh, useful things, so that if I ever have to look at your STL files and figure out what's up, I I know what it is by looking at the name. Um, yep, so let's do it for our next guy. Solid, right click, move to new component, uh, box, base, simple, enter. So now we have a box base component. There's still RS docs files, so now we got to start getting this ready for conversion. We're going to actually convert this assembly file into component files. So I want to move these guys to external um, by going to source. So I'll right click, then go to source, convert to external. That just made a guy uh, an example of this on my desktop or wherever your your auto thing saves to. I I tend to set my things to auto save as to my desktop so I can find them easy. It also probably goes to documents on your computer. So that guy got saved to the, my desktop. I'm going to go for this guy, right click source, convert to external. Now he's saved. Let's go ahead and minimize this guy. Check this to make sure it's showing you what I'm looking at because that's happened a few times. Um, now we have our assembly file and our component files. Okay, now we're going to open these guys, so double click, and then double click, and then that opened it in our guy here. Um, oh yeah, you can just close that start page, it's useless. Okay, assembly file, component files. Now we have files that have each of these guys by themselves, which is what we want. So, now we want a file, save as, and now we're going to convert them. So, keep the name, click on this guy here, the type, scroll down to STL file, um, yep, go ahead and save. So now we have box and simple STL. Uh, can we click on box base simple? File, save as, uh, STL, save as. Uh, now I got, making sure you're still looking at what I'm looking at. Uh, I've got two STL files on my computer. Your computers will probably not recognize these, they'll look like um, undefined deals, which is okay. Minor MC because I have matter control on my computer. This is the program on this laptop that um, talks to the printer for us. So this is my lap. This is the Stargate laptop you're looking at. So it has the picture of the thing on the back. Um, so you'll come find me. You'll take your STL files, put them on your flash drive that I have hopefully given you, and then you'll bring it to this laptop, which you'll will load into the program here. So, let's go ahead and open Matter Control so I can show you what it looks like. It's, um, it's not going to be happy because I don't have a printer connected because it's currently 10 miles away. But, there's actually a fancy way to, to do it remotely. But, um, it's not very useful. So, you would normally have a printer selected. You're going to go ahead and click Add. Uh, go to your file. And we have an enormous deck box base. In fact, it looks really tall. Looking at it now, I might um, 
I might shrink it down to 75 mil or 75 millimeters or seven and a half centimeters, um, which hopefully should be enough for just a 60 card deck because this looks rather tall. And it would also, when you have big things like this, um, it takes a long time to print. The longer your time your th object takes to print, the more time you have for a failure to occur, for it to get bumped or overheat or clog. Um, which is just, it's just a uh, one of the just part of the design process. Uh, so you would also add, there's our printer has a bigger ball of build volume than this. We could technically fit both those in. Um, this is gonna take probably four hours to print. So if I go ahead and uh, go to layer view, um, generate. What that just did was it, it used my slicer program that's part of this guy, which took our model, our STL file, and cut it up into layers that are a thickness that our thing prints in. So this is the very first layer out of 252 layers. So it's going to print 252 layers for our whole object, uh, which, is, which is a lot. And yeah, it's going to take four and a half hours. So if I, if I dropped it down to 75 meters, that would actually cut off some good time. Um, yeah, and then it, it builds it layer by layer until you get it done. It's beautiful. All right. So we could technically add both components and have it print at the same time, but when you, that would for one make this substantially longer print time. So it's it's wiser just to print them separately. All right. Well, that's that guy. Um, yeah. So that was our deck box, our first little deck box, a simple guy. We'll make some more complicated guys in the future. Alright, uh, thanks for watching. See you guys later.